Hi folks, hope you're okay today. I just want to share a paper and just point out a few things uh, from this paper that you can have. It's on the origins of the Quran. Excuse me. And um, it's a, basically a summary of classic essays on um, on the Quran. And it's um, edited by Ibn uh, Warak, uh, Parthemius Books, New York, 1998. And basically, it's a summary of sort of modern scholarship of what's gone on concerning the Quran. And um, you can get this paper, it's uh, debate.org, debate.org, and um, summarized by Sharon Morad of Leeds. Sharon Morad of Leeds, and it's the origins of the Quran, and it's debate.org.uk, debate.org.uk. So you can get this paper, download it uh, from there. And it's an excellent uh, paper on modern critical scholarship on the Quran. And I'm just going to read a few <coughs> interesting uh, points from the introduction. We write, we read from page nine to thirty-five of the book. There is a notable lack of critical scholarship on the Quran. Major questions still needing answers include: How did the Quran come to us? Issues of confirmation and transmission. When was it written and who wrote it? What are the sources of the Quran? The origins of stories, legends, and principles. What is the Quran? How do we determine authenticity? Uh, there's German scholars who are developing a website called uh, Cornopia, Quran Cornopia, where they're trying to look at the origins of the Quran, look at ancient literature of the time, and see where the Quran is. Uh, taken from those bits of ancient literature and that is in its infancy so modern scholarship uh, concern, concerning the Quran uh, is a, still backward compared to say the scholarship of the Bible where for centuries the Bible has been under critical scrutiny the Quran has not had that kind of scrutiny and even many scholars around the world who are Islamic scholars hinder that scholarship We read in the introduction, collection under Abu Bakr, page 11 of this uh, Origins of the Quran, classic essays on Islam's holy book, edited edit by Ibn uh, Warak, uh, Prometheus Books, 1998. Abu Bakr was a caliph of 632 to 634. There are several incompatible traditions describing the collation during his reign. Umar was worried about bits of the Quran would be lost after many Muslims were killed in the Battle of Yamama. Therefore, he commissioned Zayed ibn Thabit to collect the Quran and write it down. Question. Or was it Abu Bakr's ideas or maybe Ali's, Ali's question? There are several other difficulties. Could this have been accomplished in only two years? The Muslims were fighting the Battle of Yama in Central Asia. Had why had these new converts memorized the Quran, but the Arab converts had not? Why was this collation not an official codex, but rather the private property of Hafsa? It sounds like these traditions were invented to credit the popular Abu Bakr, and more significantly to debit much maligned Uthman. The collection of the Quran, page 12 to 13 in the book, Uthman was caliph from 644 to 656. He was asked for an official codex by one of his generals because the troops were fighting over which reading of the Quran was correct. Zayed was once asked and commissioned with the help of three others, but number one, the Arabic of the Quran was not a dialect. Number two, there are variations between the number of names of people working with Zayed. One version lists somebody already dead at the time. Three, in these stories there is no mention of Zayed's involvement in an earlier recension. Most scholars assume that Uthmic recension is correct and that Abu Bakr recension is fictitious, but they have no valid reasons for preferring it over the later, and the same reasons for dismissing the Abu Bakr story by biased and reliable late sources attempt to credit, discredit the collector, etc., 
can be applied to the Uthman story as well. One major and often unaddressed question is how much can we rely upon the memories of the early Muslims? Can we assume that they not only remembered everything perfectly, but that they heard and understood Muhammad perfectly in the first place? Variant versions, uh, verses, missing verses, added, etc. are uh, considered in page 13 to 18. Modern Muslims assert that the Quran is identical to the recited by Muhammad, but earlier Muslims were more flexible. Uthman, Aisha and Abu Kaba, uh, among others, all insisted that much of the Quran had been lost. Codices were made by different scholars, e.g. Ibn Masud, Ubay ibn Ka'b, Ali, Abu, Baka al-Asawad. Uthman's codex supposedly standardized the continental text, yet continental variations persisted in the 4th century, and unappointed and unavowed script contributed to the problem. Also, although Uthman tried to destroy rival codes, various readings survived. Standardization was not actually achieved until the 10th century under the influence of Ibn Mujhid, even the admitted 14 versions of the Quran. Even he admitted 14 versions of the Quran. These are not merely differences in recitation, they are actual written variations. Also, if some verses were omitted, why couldn't some have been added? For example, the Karajites considered the Joseph story to be an interpolation, and most scholars suggest an addition of scribal glosses designed to explain the text of the smooth out rhyme. Next, Skepticism of Sources, page 18 to 34. Muhammad died in 632, and the earliest written material of his life is the Saira ibn Iska. 750, but Ibn Ishka's work was lost. We only have parts of it available in quotation by Ibn Hisham 834. The hadith are even later. There are six authoritative collections of hadith Bukhari, Bukhari, Muslim, Ibn Majah, Abu Dawad, Al Timardi, and Al Nasser are all outdated between 200 and 300 years after Muhammad. Scholars have attempted to distinguish which hadith contain real information from those containing legendary or theological or political embellishment. Valhausen insists that the 8th century version, Ibn Ishan, was accurate and late versions were deliberate fiction designed to alter the 8th century story. Satayani and Kamen suggest that most uh, Syria were invented to construct an ideal past and justification for contrary, exaggerated exegesis of, of Quran. Most scholars conclude that the stories about Muhammad prior to becoming a prophet are fictitious, and this important critique of the hadith, Goldizer argues that many hadith accepted, even by the most rigorous collectors, were 8th and 19th century forgeries with fictitious isonads. These hadith arose out of quarrels between the Umayyads and their opponents, both sides freely inventing the hadith to support their respective positions. The manufacture of hadith speeded up under the Abbasids who were vying with Alids for primacy. Even Muslims acknowledge a vast number of forgeries, 90% of hadith were discarded, but even so the collectors were not as rigorous as could be hoped. Even in the 10th century over 200 forgeries were identified in Bukhari. At one point, 12 different versions of his work existed. In his study of the Hadith of Satya concludes, Isnads only began by widely used by the Abbasid revolution and then they were formulated carelessly. The better an Isnad looks, the more likely it was to be spurious. No existing Hadith can reliably be ascribed to Muhammad. Most of the classical corpses was widely disseminated after Shafi 820 and most of it, he legal tradition was formulated in the 9th century. His methodology includes looking at legal decisions and if they didn't refer to a crucial tradition it's because the tradition wasn't there. He argues that tradition was created in response to 9th century conditions and then redacted back to several centuries. Islam cannot be traced accurately back before the 8th century. Wandsbury argues that Quran and Hadith developed out of sectarian controversies and were projected back to the time of Muhammad. Islamic law developed after contact with Rabbic Judaism outside the Hijaz. 
Muhammad is portrayed as a mosaic type prophet. Mosaic type prophet, but the religion was uh, Arabized, an Arabic prophet, Arabic holy language, Arabic scripture. At the time, as the formation of this Arabic religion was seen, the beginning of interest in pre-Islamic Arabic poetry further suggestive of a rise in Arabic nationalism. Negative evidence further supports a late date for the creation of the Quran. There is no record of the Quran being used in legal decisions before the 9th century, and the Fiqh Akbar uh, one, a sort of Muslim creed drafted in the mid 8th century to represent orthodox views, contains no reference to the Quran. Cook, Crone, and Hinz argue that Islam developed as an attempt to find a common identity among peoples united in the conquest that began with the Arabs joined Messianic Judaism in an attempt to retake the Promised Land. So, some devastating uh, information there. And this paper goes into the book and looks specifically at these various scholars. And I'd encourage you to, to download this paper, The Origins of the Quran, debate.org.uk, and have a read of it. And then go and research the scholars and go and study. And as Muslims, I think you need to be more open uh, to this scholarship. You know, you need to expose yourself to, you know, it's interesting down at High Park that Muslims are very quick to use Western scholars to attack the Bible. But it's interesting that Muslims are not quick to read scholarship that criticizes the Quran. And I would encourage you as a Muslim to go and read this stuff and to have an open mind and to see that a lot of the things that your Muslim scholars are telling you are not true and you need to be more open. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Don't forget my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com and God bless you and love to you.